Good morning. Um, we don't see many cases like yours. Uh, tell me about your crime. Well, sir, um, I was charged with pandering. Um, you were charged with human trafficking. I was I was tried with that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, okay. Go ahead. But that was I was not found to be sufficient evidence toward that, and I was offered a, a pandering charge, um, to which I pled guilty on two counts. Um, I'm guilty of having two juveniles in my company. And the reason why they were in my company was because I thought that I was trying to, I was helping them not be on the street. I was involved in my own, my own life. I was involved in um, the sexual business and I had not, no way of knowing out of it for myself um, let alone to help them out of it, but I did not feel like I should, I should have left them in the in on the street and then with the baby. They had a three month old baby, so according to what I thought to do to to do then, which was criminally negligent. That's why I'm here. Um, but you. Uh assisted them in uh, pursuing prostitution, right? Um, they used my soft, they used my, my laptop. They, they, they had to acquire the means through me to continue to do what they were doing. Okay. They were doing it before they met you? Yes, sir. How'd you meet them? Um, I was introduced to them by my co-defendant, who was at the time, who at the time was my boyfriend, my living boyfriend. Okay. You still have a relationship with him of any kind? Absolutely not. Um, what would your, what do you think you'd do for a living if you were released on parole? Well, I was already working on music. I write music. Since I've been incarcerated, I've written over 300 poems, which I plan to publish um and continue with my music aspirations um i also will be doing some some homework some sewing things at home but i i received social security full social security benefits and why do, why do you receive social security benefits well for my physical disability and my mental disabilities and and what if i may ask is your physical disability I have a combination of fibromyalgia, scoliosis, arthritis, and sciatica. Um, tough to be a sex worker with all those conditions, isn't it? Um, yes, sir. It, it was. Um, and um, what mental condition? I have some emotional disturbances, um, PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Emotional uh, PTSD um, from what period in your life? Um, it wasn't from my military service. It was it was um, post military service, kind of uh, several abusive relationships, and probably a little bit of Katrina. Um, you were in the military? Yes, sir. The branch? Army National Guard. For how long? From 1994 to 1998. And uh, what was the nature of your discharge? It was honorable discharge with conditions. Good. Um, thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Um, you wish you'd stayed with it? Yes, I wish I had gone active duty. Yeah, well, that's what I meant, I guess. Uh, I was getting more, more from it. Um, were you using drugs or alcohol during the period of time that you committed this crime? I drank occasionally. Um, I was using marijuana, but I think that I was more severely being manipulated and lied to by my co-defendant and kind of blinded over a lot of the things that were going on. 
Um, but as far as abusing drugs, I've never done any kind of hard drugs other than marijuana and a drink occasionally. I've never been um, susceptible to my downfall because of the use of narcotics. Um, I think it was my choice of company and the uh, decisions that I made. I, as to your um, pursuits uh, upon release, I, I don't have to tell you that the music business is pretty fickle. Oh, yes, sir. And, and uncertain at, at best. Yes. Um, there are uh, fabulous rewards if you're successful and, uh, and very little reward when you're not. So um, are you receiving enough in Social Security disability benefits to survive? Well, we have a family house, which I'll be living in. So aside from my own um, immediate needs like food and, and personal, you know, things, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that, with that situation. I don't have any, any rent to pay or utilities to have to pay for. Um, and I get the maximum amount for my social security for my amount for me at that point. Um, and most of the musicians I know have pretty much told me they do music because they love to do music. Mm -hmm. And they've been, you know, world traveled and they've come back to New Orleans to do music oh. in New Orleans because they I love know, but when I asked you what you were going to do for a living, that's what you told me. Yeah, that's my, my and, pursuit. And, and, I, and you understand my concern. Um, yes, sir. If, if, um, if I told you I was going to, my beginning tomorrow, I'm going to, play professional basketball, my chances of succeeding are pretty slim. Okay. They, were, they were slim 50 years, alone, years ago, let alone now. Yes. So I'm speaking of the odds, you may be the most talented musician I've ever heard. You may be the best songwriter, best poet. I don't know. We have no idea about any of that. But statistically speaking, um, the odds are against you. So. As, as long as you're going things with your eyes wide open, that's, I think that's important. Um, who else lives in the family home? Well, this the part of the home that belongs to my father and he and his wife live in California. So that part of the house is basically vacant for me right now. Uh, I'm, well, I'm a little confused now. It's a house? It's a house that was um, left to my dad and his and his siblings by my grandmother and it stayed in the house it has to stay in the family so it can't be sold out of the family okay um, and he added on to the house so there's two other living areas there's two other basically apartments and okay. that third apartment it's like a triplex yes. kind yes yes right there um, where is it located uptown new orleans up near um you say up near the canal uh Cambron and plum uh pigeon town area um how far did you go in school i graduated high school and i have some college good uh were you majoring in anything in college or were you doing general studies um i had attempted a general uh major of a, a com, excuse me, a, a combined major of marketing management and information systems. And I kind of veered away from the computer programming and into the marketing. Um, now, when I would choose to go back to college, I would study English and psychology. Um, and what programs have you taken since you've been locked up? Okay, so I've taken my reentry. I've also taken substance abuse and um, oh, I'm sorry, I got nervous. That's okay. okay. Have you taken sex offender training? I, yes, sir. I was in I was enrolled in that class when the when the quarantine hit, um, which was uh, morals and integrity, and I was almost finished with my first year of it. Um, and I was also taking MRC. Um, MRT, excuse me. So, so how many parts of the sex offender treatment have you taken? I've taken um, almost a full year of it. 
okay, but not completed it. Well, I understand. Look, I didn't say it was your fault. I, we're not as assigning blame that some people, uh, you know, COVID-19 affects uh, different people different ways that treats almost nobody well. <laughs> so, um, I understand it will cost me a little more to finish it in the world mm -hmm. than here. All right, that's all the questions I have. Ms. Boz? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the records uh, show that you are divorced and the mother of three children. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What are the ages of your children? My daughter is 20. She's in college. My middle son is 15. And my youngest son is five. My well, where are they? Where, where are they, my, the minors? My youngest son is with the family who wishes to adopt him. And they're awaiting to go through the, the finishing process of that. Um, my 15 year old is with his father and his grandmother where he lives in New Orleans. Because so the, the five year old, is he in child services, child protective services? The five year old is with a family, with a mother and a father who have had him since he was three months old. Okay. Uh, tell me about your write ups. Have you had any write ups uh, since you've been down this time? I have had no um, no disciplinary actions. I had one write up for an uh, an, a, an incident I did not know was 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 wrong to do. I, when I cut my hair, I naturally flushed it down the toilet and it got caught in the drain. So I got a, a pink slip and a, and a stern warning about flushing things that don't go down the drain. Uh, when was that? That was at Hunt's. You remember the date? No, ma'am. But like I said, I didn't suffer any disciplinary action, so I don't know what became of it. You had enrolled in the horticulture program in yes. August of 19. Yes, ma'am. We were also stopped because of the quarantine. Right, but you have no interest in, in, in pursuing anything in that field. Well, I actually do, but it's more long-term and more personal than it would be um, professional. Um, me and my mother, we've always grown a, a large garden. And so that part of growing things always interests me. And then the, the building part of things, like I said, my dad built onto our family home. And so the building and the, the, the landscaping part really interests me as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I do want to inform you as a part of this process where we, we make uh, contact with the victim should the VA going to be speaking. And um, and your victim is, is opposed, well, your victim's mother is opposed uh, to your release. And she indicated that her daughter is still dealing uh, with the toll of the crime. Can you speak to that? Um, well, I can, I can speak to the issue of the mother being opposed to me being out. Um, I, I was, I was more against what I was doing than it, it ever came out to, to, to be known. And I had tried my very best in communicating to the girls that they shouldn't be doing what they were doing, except I couldn't lead by example. So, you know, it's like trying to tell somebody they should go a different way than the way that you're going because you know where they would end up. So, they didn't listen to me. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. And had they chosen to go back home to their mother, which I suggested, go to um, the Covenant House, which I suggested, maybe I wouldn't be in this situation, but I'm here and I accept my consequences and what it has suffered me and my children because of the choices that I made to help them in the way that I tried to help. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all I had, Chairman. 
All right, Warden, do you have a comment? No, sir, I do not. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pate, do you have, uh, would you like to make a comment? You're muted. Can't hear you, Ms. Pate. I don't see her. I don't see her either. I see her name, but she wanted to speak, so I guess. All right. Okay, well, one more time. Well, we're trying to unmute her. Okay. Hmm. There, that was off for a second. Now. All right, Ms. Pate. I'm sorry, what, uh, what was the question? I didn't I just go ahead, if you'd like to make a statement on, on, on her behalf. Um, yes, uh, after, well, I recently uh, found out that, um, that the victims were uh, runaways after doing some diligent research online, but um, as far as my mother's, uh, the timing is, as far as I've been talking to her, I have seen the progress in uh, her daily mindset, you know, what she believes in, and uh, it's a shift from what I've known her to be in my childhood, which was uh, absent and uh, choosing to do what's best for her and not, you know, what's best for the people that she loves and the people that she brought into this world. So as far as that, uh, she has gotten better with. Uh, it's not the best that it can be, but it's a process that uh, I am willing to take with her once she does get out and while she is uh, remaining inside. That's all. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Adele Krieger. Good morning. Um, our position is that we are going to oppose any early release of uh, Ms. Cagnolotti due to the fact that this crime involved the risk and endangerment uh, involving juveniles and in, in the circumstances involving the crime. Um, the fact that they were found in a hotel room with items that may suggest uh, an unsuitable by all means environment for young juveniles to be in. And as a result, um, we oppose any release. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, can you tell me how, uh, how old the victims were, Ms. Krieger? Yes, I have in my report um, that one of the juveniles was six years old at the time, or no, nine years old at the time, or six years old. Date of birth, 828-2000. And then another was date of birth, 121-2000. Well, well 2000 days. wouldn't make them six or nine. What? 16. Oh, excuse me, 16, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> 16 and, uh, or both 16. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, that makes more sense to me. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. All right. Let me get something back just a second. All right, Angela, um, just to clarify for me, I'm just trying to work through your, your SSI. I mean, your diagnoses that you have there, is there something else that you have a diagnosis to be able to be on SSI? Uh, is there something else going on at those, those particular diagnoses? I'm just not really sure if that will make you eligible. Is, it, is there a cognitive? Is there some, is the PS? Cognitive, meaning yeah. um, Any type, of, so is there uh, mental health issues that's allowing you to have the SSI? I mean, you got, you said you had sciatica, you said you had scoliosis. You said you had fibromyalgia and arthritis. Yes, sir. Is it, and you just applied with that and got on SSI. There's no anxiety, depression. There's no. I, I went through Matt Greenbaum and Associates. Uh -huh. Um. So, I mean, they would have they would have my records as yeah, well. I'm just asking you. Is there anything oh, else I mean, going on? Those it, are the issues. Those were my main issues with my physical disability, but I also have my psych records to back up. What, what what's go what goes on with me? Um, my mother was bipolar, and I had a very um, kind of traumatic 
you know, childhood dealing with her. Um, but I try to remain, you know, conscious and emotionally balanced, but I still have to, you know, I still have to see a psych and I still have to take some, some medications. Right. With that. So, so that, that plays into, because, you know, you get around, I know you have those diagnoses, but you get around, I mean, you can walk around, you can function all your activity of daily living, you can do what you need to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you put your mind to it and you, and you exclude negative factors. Right. But I mean, from a physical standpoint. Oh, from a physical standpoint, if I have the if I have the the means and the ability to to sit when I need to sit, stand when I need to stand, those were my basic limitations, um, you know, not to reach and bend at the same time. Um, I get a lot of pinched nerves. So, you know, it's, it's moderation and and listening to my body. Right. I can pretty much do whatever I need to do. I could cut grass, you know, I could keep right. clean. Right. With those diagnoses, you should be able to do pretty much anything you want to. What um what is uh would you like to make a statement on your behalf? I would just like to say that um to all those, you know, opposed and to all those for, you know, my 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 release, I have grown. I have appreciated the time that I've been here and I have definitely learned um, my lesson in understanding what decisions I would definitely make differently. Um, I've had time to mature and grow as a person. And either way, either way, it's okay. All right, thank you. Panel prepared to vote? Yep. Mr. Uh, Keith Jones. Uh, Ms. Kagan, a lot of you obviously are a bright woman. Uh, yes. and, and, uh, and I think you, could, uh, you can achieve a lot. You may be, uh, you might have a brilliant career in music. I don't know. But, um, but you pled guilty to pandering and, and all you could tell us today is how much you were trying to help those girls. And I and and that's not what you pled to. The your victims say um, at least one um, is says is symptomatic and and doesn't know if she'll ever get over it. She this and, uh, this and you, he's got the no. floor. And um, so my vote today is to deny your parole. That's fine. Miss Miss uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss Cagliari, I um, you are definitely an interesting case, and uh, you had a five-year sentence, and you you better done a year of the sentence, and you have not completed a sex offender uh sex offender uh treatment sex offender program and I really would like to see that done before you leave so my vote I concur with Mr. Jones my vote is to deny for those reasons all right. all right yeah two votes to deny I'm also going to vote to deny your parole uh, due to law enforcement opposition victim opposition uh you need uh, some more programs so three votes to deny your parole's been denied thank you thank you I kind of saw quickly her tone change when she saw the denial was coming in. I'm going to share something with you that um, might shed additional information. And a metro area man is behind bars in the Big Easy, charged with sex trafficking. Police there say he was with two teenage victims at the time. David Kenny tells us how he's tied to the metro area. Police arrested 36-year-old Pierre Smith of Jackson and 38-year-old Angela Cagnolotti of New Orleans after finding two 16-year-old girls and a newborn boy in their hotel room. Police say one of the girls had been reported missing and the other had been reported as a runaway in May, both just 16 years old. Smith and Cagnolotti are both being held on $100,000 bond. Police say they were holding the girls against their will, driving to different hotel rooms in the area, 
where they were forced to have sex. Authorities in Ridgeland, who successfully prosecuted the first sex trafficking case in the state, say it's a transient business where runaway teens are often preyed upon. They promise them money, they promise them clothes, they promise them material things. Um, so the, and, and, and once they get them in and they, and they get them working, so to speak, mm -hmm. then they keep them in it by force, by threat of physical harm. Lieutenant Tony Wilridge says victims can sometimes be forced to have sex multiple times a day. Some also hooked on drugs or alcohol, escaping not always an option, but law enforcement give this advice to sex trafficking victims. Do the best you can to get to the hotel management lobby and ask to use the phone. Be very discreet about what it is you're doing because these individuals will harm you. In Ridgeland, David Kenny, three on your side. And, uh, That's a very different story, right? It was pretty incredible. I thought how how um, you know I, I was you know it was interest an interesting hearing. I was kind of like for a second, like okay, maybe there's misunderstanding. She has she's well spoken. She has four years in the National Guard, and you know they don't really get much out of the questions. The assistant DA speaks. We've seen her before. I really like her. Um, she wasn't. Uh, I guess prepared, you might say, when she, when she mentioned the age, I was like, "That's that's not right," because I read already done the, the research. Um, but but it's great that she shows up, and I really do like her. Uh, although I think she's moved on to a private firm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. And um, hold on, let me show you some other things. But it just, I think my takeaway was just how well she was at masking her, you know, making herself seem innocent. And like she kind of did nothing. She was in the business, but they were just staying with her. And uh, and then I, I, when she gave her finishing speech, it was like ridiculous. It was like, oh, I tried to give them advice, um, but... Uh, I couldn't. So, you know, it's, um, I suggested that they go home, but, uh, and I wouldn't be here if, 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 uh, if they had, and it had an effect on me and how I tried to help them. She literally like that, you know, it's not that like she actually believes that she tried to help these two 16 year old girls. Now the baby, I believe was the child of one of the 16 year old girls. Um, two 16 year olds and a newborn. I believe the newborn was the child of the 16 year old, not involved in any of this craziness. Um, the her co defendant, I could not find information, uh, how much time he received. I asked Richard to see if we could find a parole hearing for him. If we find it, uh, we will put it up. Um, but they found they found they ended up finding them because they found these girls at a street corner uh and they were also notified that they were that they were missing i'm not sure if these are if these are them or not um but yeah they were they were notified let me see where it was These minor children are being treated like livestock. Assistant District Attorney Michael Hen shot back. It's blatantly obvious what's going on with these minor children. They're being exploited for money. That's what he shot back after their public defenders said that uh, the sex toys found in the room were for personal use and um, the case against them was based on uh, assumptions. Um, you know, they use the U.S. Marshals, the Department of Homeland Security, and the parish uh, sheriff's office to to task force. It was a joint investigation to to on this um, to to find these girls, and both of them were reported missing. So they, they were spotted um, uh, on a street corner near the hotel, um, and the investigator said one girl told him that Smith and and Cagnot Lottie would drive them to various places in the city, but she refused to explain why. And when they searched hotel room 17, it turned up several cell phones, laptops, sex toys, condoms, 
lubricants, a ledger containing references to back page advertisements, and a, a list of people with their phone numbers. Yeah. But uh, she was just trying to help them. You know, she was just trying to, she was just trying to help them, of course. And that's just the interesting thing. It's some people are just seasoned um, professional you know, manipulated if you want to call them that. And I, I did find myself thinking maybe wasn't so, you know, the, but uh, it was interesting. I like Keith Jones uh, style of interview as well. You know, wasn't, um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It could have been a little bit more, you know, punching down to the point, but good thing we had the assistant DA. They denied and with that, I'll let you go.